So you're bored, like really, really bored. You were supposed to study, but then every single thing other than your book is suddenly extremely interesting. And now here you are watching my video to procrastinate again. Hey besties, today I'll be explaining 7 unique study tips that will help make studying a little bit easier and maybe even a little bit more fun. Don't worry, I won't be including basic tips like do mind maps and reward yourself. I'll actually be telling you guys simple, fun study tips that actually helped me tackle boring and difficult subjects. Study tips number 4 and number 7 are important words I feel that every student should hear. I wish someone had told me them, so be sure to watch till the end of the video to know what those are. First, associate different terms to different items. If you have trouble remembering information and you get bored easily, then this study method is perfect for you because it is both fun and it helps you improve the amount of information you can recall. I learned this study technique from Unjaded Jade 3 years ago but it's still really helpful today. Take any object or animal. This object that you pick should be something that's really familiar to you like a clock, a pen or a mickey. In this case, I'll pick this weird door sign that has been hanging in my study room for the past few years. Then pick a starting point. It can be anywhere on your object, but in this case, I'll pick its left eyebrow. You want to assign the first sentence or term that you want to remember to that starting point. So let's just say you want to remember the equation for photosynthesis. So the first term in this equation is carbon dioxide. Since we have chosen the left eyebrow to be the starting point, it will then be associated with carbon dioxide, which is the first term. Then pick a second point on your object for the second term. So basically, you want to pick different points on your object and associate it with different terms you're trying to memorize. So altogether, it will be carbon dioxide and water are converted by light energy, which is captured by chlorophyll, into glucose and oxygen. This method of associating parts of an object to different terms you're trying to remember can be done with anything that you're familiar with. You just need to have a very clear sequence when you're picking the points on an object. So during your exam or when you're revising, you can just imagine the object and go through the sequence in your head. This makes it super easy to remember a lot of information because let's just say you picked a clock and assigned 12 points to each of the 12 numbers on the clock. If you can only recall 10 points, you know that you have forgotten something. If you did this study technique properly, you'll be able to just imagine the object and immediately recall all your points. Next, you need to use apps and websites that make the process of studying easier. So one really popular way of making studying fun is by using websites like Notion. You guys all know this. I've actually created a free template for all my subscribers. I'll link that down in my description box below. You can download it for free right now. But today I want to introduce to you guys an app that you might not have heard about before called PDF Element, which will literally blow your mind and save you so much time. Let me just show you. Here I am just using my phone to take a picture of my biology textbook. I then import that image to PDF element on my laptop, then perform OCR. Now this is the exciting part. It allows you to edit the text in the image directly and also help you match the font to the original font as well. You can see here how I'm easily summarizing this entire chunk of text into short points without needing to painstakingly copy everything into my notebook. You can also annotate, highlight, write sticky notes, draw, and so much more. You can try PDF Element for free by clicking the link in my description box, but if you really like it, you can purchase the pro version at a huge discount right now. If you're a student, even better, it'll be even cheaper for you. Next. Watch videos before reading your textbook. For more difficult subjects, it might help for you to watch videos on the topic first before reading your scary textbook. My favorite websites for school-related videos are YouTube and Khan Academy, which really saved my life for chemistry and statistics. You can also try these websites. I mainly use them for learning things like digital art and coding. Watching videos are way more fun than reading a textbook and plus, you're gonna watch videos anyway after reading your textbook because you don't understand anything so why don't you just watch videos first? 
But there is a technique to watching videos. You want to dedicate one page in your notes to write short points while you're watching the videos. If you do not write anything while watching videos, it means that you're not actively engaging with the content being shown, which means that you will not retain any information, which makes this method completely useless. Mark any points that you think are important and mark any points that make you confused. Make sure you leave a few lines in between those marked points because you're going to go back to your textbook and expand on those points. This is a really great way of building your interest in a topic because instead of being hit by a huge wall of text, you'll first watch a visually interesting video, write a few notes on that, then build your knowledge on points you aren't quite sure about. An advertisement might play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please do not skip the ads. Thank you! Next, don't get demotivated about feeling confused. I'm sure at one point, all of us have experienced feeling dumb or demotivated when learning a new topic. Feeling stuck or feeling like you don't know enough is literally part of the learning process. Every single person in this world, including geniuses, have felt stuck at some point in their lives. Those that overcome that feeling of being stuck and don't give up are the ones who succeed. You aren't supposed to know everything. If you knew everything, you wouldn't be in school. Write down all the questions and confusions that you have and work to solve them. I promise you, you will definitely do well in school or anything in life once you actually put in the effort to go past each learning curve. You're just this close to achieving your goal, so don't give up just yet. Next, focus on tasks, not schedules. Now, you guys know that I always encourage you to plan your day because it can be really stressful to always have to think about what to do next. However, I do understand that planning isn't for everyone and it can be quite overwhelming to people that aren't as motivated about their studies. So instead of planning your entire day from the moment you wake up to the moment you sleep, just write down what you have to do. Keep this to a maximum of 5 tasks. You don't want to stress yourself even more by having a full to-do list. If you complete all your work within a few hours, that's great! Don't do anything else, just rest. But if you can't finish your work, it's okay. Just move it to the next day and don't add any new tasks. Make sure you complete these unfinished tasks first. By focusing on tasks instead of time, you'll be a lot less overwhelmed. Next, associate different playlists to different subjects. You want to associate different songs or playlists to different subjects so that once you put on that playlist, it automatically puts you in the mood to study that subject. For example, for SPM, I only listen to Yuruma and nothing else. For A-levels, I listen to Lo-Fi for biology and physics, then piano versions of Disney music for economics. Don't ask me why. Have dedicated playlists for only studying and do not listen to those songs when you're not studying. I accidentally discovered this study tip a few years ago when a hotel lobby played Yiruma and that put me in a study mood for no reason. I also realized that listening to the same music for a subject actually helped me focus because when I heard a specific song for example, I can roughly recall what I was learning at that time. You can also study at different places for different subjects. That way, when you go into that area, your brain automatically goes into work mode for that subject. For this last and most important tip, I want you to drill this into your brain. Make friends with people that like to study or care about their education. I know a good chunk of you guys are still in high school or college or university and I just want to make this really really clear. It is important to have friends that you can joke around and make fun memories with. However, you need to also be friends with people that actually care about their studies if you want to succeed in your academics. I completely agree with the statement that you are the average of the 5 people you surround yourself with. Imagine your 5 closest friends right now. You're a mixture of all of them. Friends that care about school will encourage you to do well, support you when you're feeling demotivated about a subject, and work with you to improve. Studying would feel so much more like a chore if you find that everyone around you also feels the same way. So please surround yourself with people that actually have the same goals as you. If you have made it this far, comment down below if you prefer to study in groups or study alone and why. 
be sure to like this video, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and set it to all so that you'll never miss a future video. Thank you guys for 195,000 subscribers and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye bye!